This is a series of location photo soundbites that should be used in conjunction with my soundbites discussing technique. Currently, there are 15. See my YouTube channel or website www.derekforce.com. The radical program of building our magnificent English cathedrals started after the Norman Conquest, when William the Conqueror wielded his authority, eradicating much of Saxon architecture and authority. London's medieval St Paul's was destroyed by the Great Fire of London in 1666, and it was Sir Christopher Wren who built the new cathedral to a totally different design that miraculously survived the Blitz and is greatly admired today. Photography is not permitted inside this great building, but during summer school holidays in August, St Paul's hosts a series of Thursday summer lates when photography is permitted, but no tripods, flash, drones or selfie sticks. Not being able to use a tripod brings out the traditional photographer, the answer being a combination of photographic skills now largely forgotten with today's image stabiliser technology, assisted by mirrorless cameras. Those in Olympus OMD and Pen cameras are highly sophisticated, now added to Zuiko lenses that work with the camera's stabiliser, permitting sharp, handheld photographs at shutter speeds up to a half a second at 200 ISO, unheard of a few years ago. I use the F4 Constant Aperture Zuiko 12-100 Pro lens, which has a stabiliser. Standing for square and holding your breath when taking the picture is the traditional technique. Add today's stabiliser and I was entirely comfortable using both techniques and skills past and present. Lighting was a nightmare, a mix of daylight and floodlight, and to make matters worse, it was lovely and sunny outside, increasing contrast inside. I set white balance to daylight, 5500 Kelvin, but it made no difference as I was saving to raw as adjustments could be made later. But if saving to JPEG, you have to make up your mind now, and perhaps auto white balance here will be best. I have mentioned contrast, and that is the bugbear inside St Paul's Cathedral. Film photographers will argue that you had to get the exposure right, particularly if working with transparency film, but print workers did have some flexibility for making corrections in the darkroom. Digital cameras and computers give far greater flexibility, especially in post-production, and knowing what can be achieved beforehand in Adobe, Lightroom or Photoshop transforms the way images are taken. Inside St Paul's there is too much contrast for any camera to handle at the mere press of a button, so the photographer has to first adjust the controls. But which ones? The choice is to either avoid underexposed shadows with no detail or overexposed highlights, especially stained glass windows that are impossible to balance with dark interiors. Correcting blown out highlights in a computer is more difficult than underexposed shadows. Unfortunately, it is not that simple. It is commonly recognised that using high ISO values increases noise, a discoloration of the image similar to grain in film. The same can occur when lightening shadows in a computer. 
However, this is my preferred approach, as blown-out highlights look worse, and success can depend on the quality of sensor and software. With these limitations in mind, which only come with experience, I will underexpose the image to contain highlights and then judiciously lighten shadows in the latest version of Lightroom. To this end, I will either spot meter off a highlight or set exposure compensation to minus 0.7 EV or minus 1, occasionally using both techniques. With Olympus OMD and pen cameras, the electronic finder gives the photographer a good preview of how these adjustments will look. But with optical viewfinders, you have no such luxury and have to guess. Technology improves with every passing year, and recently I have noticed that slightly overexposed highlights can now be corrected in Lightroom. This gives more leeway, especially when working inside churches or similar scenarios with extreme contrast. This used to be impossible and could still be true if working with an older camera and out-of-date software. Incidentally, I don't use filters because you cannot backtrack. With Lightroom or Photoshop, if you muck it up, you start again. The images in this program are all handheld, taken over three hours with many other photographers milling around, but you won't see them. Some didn't read the terms and conditions beforehand and came with tripods, unable to use them. Technology never stands still, and whilst I am a devotee of traditional photography, Gradually, I become aware that what gear and skills I used yesterday can now be left behind. Disagree if you like. Instead, judge my images by what I show and not how I do it.